presenter is Kevin Feenan of Phelan Cormel in Second Life, and he's going to speak to us about pathways to digital leadership and technology, and uh, you could go right ahead, Kevin. Okay, thank you for allowing me to speak at this uh, VACAR conference. Um, obviously, my name is Kevin Feenan, also known as Phelan Cormel here in Second Life. My talk today will be on pathways to digital leadership and technology. To begin, we need to establish a bit of a distinction between disruptive technology and innovation. Technology, by its very nature, is mostly science and technology based. It goes through major disruptive cycles approximately every five to 10 years. As you can see on the slide, from some of the major technology developments over the past 60 years, Almost every one of these is the result of engineering and the sciences. Further, that many core technological leaps tend to occur in clusters. It's no coincidence that hard drives and integrated circuits were developed approximately at the same time in the 1950s. Similarly, development of ARPANET near 1970, which is the forerunner of our modern internet, also came about approximately the same time that integrated computers were developed. Common challenges lead to new ways of thinking about problems. That in turn leads to a form of group think. While technologies are constantly being improved, the major technological leaps tend to occur in discrete increments of time, owing to time delays in the sharing of ideas, experimentation, funding and economic opportunity. On this slide, you can see a sample hype cycle for emerging technologies. This is published annually by the Gartner Group. This, this example shows some of the up and coming technologies that could have an impact in the next five to 10 years. Big business and those in science and engineering fields of research have been for some time working on these technologies. While many are not yet ready for wild, widespread commercial application, the opportunity to explore these technologies is happening behind the scenes of what we consider to be leading edge technology. Leading edge technologies like these require a period of communications, awareness and acceptance by those willing to develop the technology and overcome challenges where such technology may not be as effective as those we use today. Some may not be commercially viable, but will all eventually find new homes somewhere in solving today's more complex problems. Innovation comes about as the cost of technology comes down and its capacity to solve complex problems goes up. While the creation of technology is mostly a science-based activity, innovation is mostly a social inquiry-based activity. While some innovations continue to be technology-driven, quite often the true innovation is in the way such technology changes our ability to communicate and to do work. It overcomes hurdles, including those that we may not have been aware of prior to the introduction of such innovations. 
the distinction between disruptive technology and disruptive innovation is that disruptive technology is a catalyst, whereas disruptive innovation is a process. For example, the simple act of being able to access your banking information and conduct commerce electronically has forever changed the world. And yet none of this would have been possible without the handful of disruptive technologies that have been developed and improved upon over the past 60 years. Such innovation also requires a buildup of infrastructure, knowledge, awareness, training, and experimentation, all of which takes time on a social scale. This is why the adoption of a disruptive innovation can often take decades rather than years to permeate our social interactions. While the actual disruptive technology components have been developed and improved upon far in advance. While often we feel like such innovation just popped into existence in the blink of an eye, this is actually never the case. And you will have to give me a moment here because my speakeasy just decided to do a left turn on me here. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of cutting and pasting here. Give me one moment. Um, it is, darn it all. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's try this again and see if this is, ah, okay, there we go. We got some lag going on here. One of the challenges in education is disconnecting the idea between adoption of technology and adoption of innovation. While we talk about digital literacy involving many different competencies, at the core of digital skill development is being able to solve, connect, solve connecting current technology in, to future trends. This is a pathway that is as heavily dependent on the arts and humanities as it is about understanding the technology and overcoming it. Building digital skills is about identifying and following the path of least resistance. It is about relating to complex, oh my God, I need to apologize folks because I am completely, it's been a while since I've had to do cut and paste. Give me one second here. It is, <laughs> oh, oh, you gotta love technology. It is about relating to complex problems, breaking it into distinct parts, then selecting the technology with the fewest technological hurdles that resolves the problem in parts rather than as a whole. Digital skills is about understanding the social support systems around such problems and connecting those support systems in a way that is socially engaging. It is also about recognizing where such innovations are capable of solving more than one issue, such as where problems may include issues of global collaboration, empowering learners, digital citizenship, and much more. Here we go. The digital leaders of tomorrow will understand that technology is pervasive. By this, I mean that there will always be another tool to learn, another toy to play with, and another network to traverse. 
it's not a question of whether a specific technology exists to solve a problem, but how we relate the problem we have socially to the available technologies, be them cutting edge or bleeding edge. Digital leaders will need to have the breadth and depth of skills encompassing arts and sciences in equal measures. They will need to understand not just how technology works, but the motivations behind our current innovations, what new problems those innovations have created, and what old problems we have failed to solve. Digital leaders will not have to be experts in all fields, but they will require very active imaginations to be able to ask the question, the world would be a better place if only. Our future digital leaders will need to be able to connect the dots between the innovations we have today and the technology we are envisioning to have tomorrow. And above all, like children in a sandbox, they will need to learn to never fear the unknown. The unknown is simply a friend they haven't met yet on the path to self-discovery. I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to provide this talk and I appreciate the fact that you bared with me as my speakeasy has taken a bit of a left turn here. <laughs> <laughs>